Hi, everyone. I'm Charlie Melcher, and I'm the founder of the Future of Storytelling Summit. And I'd like to welcome you to today's speaker hangout. Uh, we're really excited to have with us today David Alexander, Senior Product Marketing Manager from Facebook. I'm sorry, excuse me, from Microsoft. <laughs> excuse me. Hi, David. Nice to see you. Hi, Charlie. Nice to see you, too. Well, I don't uh, know where that came from. Sorry about that. <laughs> It's a, um, it's, a, it's a wide world of digital media, social media, and, uh, and technology, so it's all good. I apologize. I think I'm not having enough sleep today. Um, so listen, we have a great group with us today. It's really exciting. Um, we have three other participants in today's Hangout who've all come to join us from the FOSS community. And let's take a minute and let everyone introduce themselves, since clearly that's not something I'm very good at. Uh, <laughs> Dyer, why don't you say hi and introduce yourself? <laughs> Hi everyone, um, I'm Daria Musk, I am a singer-songwriter, a musician, a millennial, and, um, <laughs> and a new fan of Sway, and um, so I'm really excited to be here to talk about my experience with it and, um, and to hang out with all these awesome people. Welcome, great to have you with us. Mm -hmm. um, Phil, Philip, say hi. Sorry, um, hi, um, I'm Phil Tiongson. Um, I have an interaction design company in New York called Potion. This is one of my designers. I'm Elita Lutzka. I work with Philip on creating the Sway that we are sharing. So we're excited to be part of it. Thanks. Thanks for being here. Great to see you. Welcome. And Sean. Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm Sean Weiner. I'm an independent filmmaker, but today I'm also wearing my educator hat. I work at a place called the Jacob Burns Film Center and work with high school students and outreach communities about teaching them to tell their personal stories through media. Welcome. Nice to see you, Sean. Thanks for being with us. So let me start it off today by first saying a couple of things. Uh, one, if anybody would like to join the conversation, please feel free to join us and send your questions in. We look forward to having you be part of the dialogue. Um, and the second thing I want to say is how much we appreciate Microsoft's participation at the Future of Storytelling Summit. They were a major partner with us this year. Um, and not just a uh, kind of normal partner, but really a strategic partner, one that made a lot of sense because of the kinds of products and, and things that are being developed there. And so I thought I'd like to start today's conversation by asking David to tell us a little bit about some of the observations that Microsoft and, and the uh, group that you work with had that led to the development of this, this interesting product called Sway. Sure. Absolutely, Charlie, and, and thanks, and thanks everybody for uh, for being here today, and it's a it's a pleasure to talk to you all. So again, my name is David Alexander. I I work at Microsoft in the Office division specifically, and in Office, we're always trying to think about how to reimagine and transform what it means for people to not only be productive, of course, in the traditional sense of what people know from Office, but to also help them just share ideas in new and interesting ways. And one of the spaces that's been increasingly growing uh, as an opportunity is in the digital storytelling space, particularly because more and more people want to share ideas and share their passions not only with just pictures and text but with a variety of multimedia and that includes videos, that includes audio, that includes social posts, that includes all sorts of interactive things whether it's maps and charts or other sort of interactive uh, content and so the ability to bring it all together in a digital space is really an opportunity that um, that has really been growing in the last few years. It's something that Traditionally, the analog space was harder to achieve because you know you had to be able to print things out and you had to be able to actually put things together in a three-dimensional way. Um, but the digital space is very, very exciting and offers a lot of really uh, exciting possibilities. And that's really where our new product called Sway uh, was born. It was born to really address that uh, that growing opportunity to help people share their ideas, share their personal stories using a variety of mixed multimedia with the power of the cloud and the productivity platform behind it. And so that's what Sway has been all about. Uh, it's been out for six months and uh, we basically we launched it in conjunction with the Future of Storytelling Summit that we uh, that, that was happening in October. And so it was a great, it was a no-brainer partnership in my opinion because of what FOST stands for. You know. FOST is really at the forefront of thinking about what it means to be a digital storyteller and to share ideas in the digital space uh, in the modern era. And so uh, it's been really, really fantastic to, to work together. Thank you. And David, one thing that I think is so great too about this fit is that FOST is a, a multidisciplinary community. 
right? Very intentionally, we bring into the FOSS community people from all different types of creative backgrounds, people, some of whom are serious technologists, many of whom are incredible storytellers in different fields or media. And so we have with us today, I think, a really nice, diverse sampling of the kinds of different uh, creative storytellers we have in, in the FOSS community. So, uh, you know, we have, yeah. a, we have a and that's, and that's, and that's, rock star. And that's, and that's a, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> it's, well, I was going to say it's a good point here because um, you know storytelling isn't just a a uh, isn't just about the the sort of artistic practice of storytelling. Um, you know, we all do storytelling in our lives, whether it's you know in a corporate professional job, you know, as a as a marketer, you know, one does storytelling to con to effectively convey a narrative. Um, but then, of course, all the way on the other side of the spectrum to creative professions, um, which uh, which I'd say Daria perfectly represents here. Um, you know, uh, to to the more sort of traditional artistic storytelling as well. So, sorry, jumped in there. <laughs> Well, it looks like Charlie may have uh, may have frozen a little bit, but can the rest of you still hear me? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, why don't I, why don't I, why don't we why don't we keep why don't we keep going down the line a little bit? What Charlie was starting to do was um, basically, I guess, uh, to have each of you introduce yourselves uh, and to start to talk a little bit about you know who you are and and where. Uh, where your sort of personal and professional passions lie, and kind of what what area of expertise you represent, um, before we start to get into talking about Sway a little bit. So, uh, Daria, I guess if you want to start. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I'm a musician, and um, one of my little titles that people have given me lately is a millennial futurist. Um, I'm sort of an accidental uh, tech geek. Um, my sort of career took off when I started doing live interactive concerts through um, Hangouts and YouTube, and um, so everything sort of started for me with that. And since then, I've been sort of uh, a, a new like tech nut, and you know, using Google Glass and using Periscope, and now using Sway. Um, and so I had this really, really remarkable, really exciting <clears throat> experience using Sway, and I guess I'm going to show you guys a little sneak peek of what I built with it um, that I shared with the world. It's sort of this internal way that I come up with songs and the way I work with my um, collaborators to come up with songs and bringing people into that world in a really dynamic, interactive way. So uh, yeah, that was my experience and a little bit about what I do. Great. Cool. Uh, Philip, do you want to go? Sure, sure. Um, the, so I'm Phil Tiongson, and I have a um, interaction design firm. And a lot of what we do is um, create interactive stories. You know, so when we are designing the stories, um, we have both, I think, a use for sway in, in sort of two different ways. One is in when when we were sort of approached for this, we, we, we thought, okay, well, let's try to get our work out there. Let's try to tell the story about how we do our projects in a new way. How do we show sort of like um, our process? Um, and how does it, because I think that with our work, it's all in motion, it's all in interaction. It's hard to explain it using just text and sometimes static pictures. Um, I think the other piece is really uh, how we work with our clients and yes. how we get them to communicate with us. Yes, exactly. When actually uh, I was working on this way and like one of the, our clients came in and they were like, oh, what is this? Can we use this to actually communicate with you to work through this story um, to make it flow better in this interaction? And we were like, oh yeah, sure, totally, let's do this. So, and that kind of worked out in our way. Yeah, so it's become a way for us to actually prototype um, ideas and share information with clients in an, in an early way, in a quick way, as well as potentially show work um, in a finished product. Cool. Should we show this way now, or should we... Um, cool. Let's, I mean, let's, get, uh, let's get Sean's intro quickly, and then sure, why don't we I'll jump... A quick one. So, um, yeah, so I work at a place called the Jacob Burns Film Center, and um, really what it is is I do a lot of teaching kids about visual literacy, both folks who might turn into media makers and creatives in the field later on, but also a lot of life skills and understanding how to collaborate and succeed uh, in whatever profession they choose later on. So Sway's been really exciting because 
uh, we have all different types of kids from all different types of areas who think in a wild variety of ways and sway has been a way for them to use both images sounds and text to convey kind of how they see the world and uh, and kind of show us their ideas and their projects awesome awesome well let's uh, let's let's see a couple of sways uh, sways in action so so Daria do you want to go ahead and, and show the sway that uh, you made a little while back and, and talk a little bit about it? Sure, yeah. Um, so I'll give you guys a little sneak peek um, of this way. And it's live, so everyone can go and check it out. Um, and I will just talk you through it while I show it to you. Um, so this is my sway. It's called Bloom. Um, and it is named after my new song, Bloom. And um, basically what I did was the second I saw sway, I thought of a, a way of using it for myself would be like a way of sharing my creative process as it happens in real time. So for the very first time, I was able to bring my, my audience and anybody, the whole world, into the process of creating a song um, from the very beginning of the idea through all of the little things that inspired me to come up with the idea to here you have like the very first moment I sang the very first melody into my phone at four in the morning and these are things I never would have normally been able to share and I wouldn't have been able to curate this beautiful story around it. Um, and I found the whole process to be so intuitive and exciting and what I loved about it was I didn't have this idea before I looked at Sway. Sway inspired me to share this creative internal songwriting process in this way because I saw, oh, I could hide it, all these little gems and le little things, uh, all these little rabbit holes for my fans to fall down and create their own relationship with the song. Um, so before it ever gets released, they're going to have this experience. And then on the practical side, this was also a way of sharing it with my producers. Um, so I was sharing with them the ideas and little things like these gifts and things that were inspiring me actually ended up inspiring the way the song ended up sounding. Um, so it was yeah, just really dynamic and really different than anything I could have done anywhere else. And um, so it was just super inspiring. And then it was really fun to watch everybody go and exploring in it, too. Um, so yeah, I'll tweet out the link to it again today so people can uh, check it out for themselves. But I'm super proud of it. And I, I'm so gushy about this way that I even wrote a little guest blog for David and his team so people can read more about how I feel about it. But um, that was my experience. And I think I might even go like full Beyonce and do one for every song on my new record. I'm really excited. So. <laughs> and those and those were the actual pieces of, of multimedia too, right? So those were actual yeah, audio files and actual videos that you could go play and listen to right in line there. Exactly, exactly. So I didn't want to do it now because I have headphones on. I didn't think it would play. Right. But, um, but yeah, when when you guys, if you guys go and explore my sway, um, yeah, I used SoundCloud. Like the little embed thing is so brilliant. You can embed anything into it. So I grabbed little embed codes from SoundCloud and put little clips and little snippets of me singing on my phone and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then there's little videos, little Instagrams, little things that I pulled from all over the place. Um, and I loved that, that I could put it all in there in a way that fit like puzzle pieces. And it wasn't like you had to scroll through my social media channels to find each little thing. It was a curated story um, and an experience that I could share in, in an organized way. Um, yeah. Sorry, what I loved about it was I just felt like you were letting us into your brain to see yeah. your creative process. And the fact that you could use all these different kinds of media, uh, you know, little video clips, little photos, little uh, bits of your songs as they developed, and also to hear the de development over time, it was something between a mood board, uh, a, a great like audio documentary, and literally just being brought into the brain of a super creative person. Oh, uh, so intimate that way. I've never seen, honestly, I've never seen anything like it. And, and I found myself unable to stop. Like I wanted to hear and see and watch every piece of it on that journey with you. So that makes me so happy. I'm so excited. It was it was that much fun for me to share too. And and like I said, really honestly, like inspired me. And as an artist, I mean, it's just shout out for all the artists out there. Like, it also motivated me to to share and then to like finish the song you know like it, it could have sat on my shelf for another couple of months but this this process of looking at all of my stuff laid out and then sharing it and then getting re-inspired myself really egged on the song and like I said inspired the producers the little gifts and pictures that I chose ended up inspiring the way he started um, bringing it you'll hear when you listen to it bringing my, my voice backwards and forwards and editing it kind of like the way that flower was blooming so it's mm. a very cool experience to just sort of tumble into and start playing with your creativity and let it kind of take over it was really fun. I didn't have to plan it ahead of time. It just happened. 
Well, to me, one of the things that was so magical about it was, and, and I think this really gets to the heart of what storytelling means for me, which is that, you know, I liken going through your sway, Daria, as actually being inside your mind while you're telling a story, not cool. just sitting in the chair next to you while you talk at me to tell yeah. me a story. And I think that that's actually one of the, the nuances that makes for really, really impactful storytelling. It really, really draws you in so you feel like the story is almost coming you know, from your own mind as well as the person who's actually telling it to you. So um, That's how so I wanted it to feel. So that's awesome. I'm so glad. Yeah. Well, awesome. Um, well, thanks, thanks for sharing. Um, I, uh, should, we, should we hear from Phil? Um, or Philip, I guess. <laughs> um, Philip, do you want to talk a little bit about your, uh, your sway and, and show that there? Sure, um, I, I would be happy to. I mean, I think it's it's it, at first, I, you know, Daria's piece is, is is great, and I think that it really shows a really expressive side. Um, when we were thinking about this, we were really thinking about this as how do we show what Potion does um, mm -hmm. in a in a new way, and I think so. It was a slightly different, you know, it's not quite as emotional, uh, but let me let me show some of the work, and I, I think Dar, I mean, uh, Edita. <laughs> Can um, can talk to it. Let me let me um, switch this over. Yeah. Well, I think you know, Philip, as you said, like like that's that's what just goes to show that you know, impactful storytelling matters in a ton of different contexts, right? It's not just artistic storytelling. It can be professional storytelling. It can be you know, sort of like thought leadership or expertise, share, you know, storytelling or personal promotion storytelling. So um, all of it has a, has a place, and that's I think what um, why we have three different you know, people and perspectives on this hangout, frankly. Um, so that's yeah. great. That's why we kind of, when we got um, access to Sway, we were like, oh, let's try to use it as a case study kind of showcase. Mm -hmm. So that's why we chose uh, one of our projects here, Future of Energy in Chicago. Um, and kind of we used it to tell the whole story of like how we arrived at the concept and the idea of it. Um, I think that one of the things that that we were really appreciative of was was being able to show me, you know, um, Edith and I weren't in the same place when we were sort of making this together. Yes, Philip travels a lot, and mm. I travel a lot, and like we had to kind of you know collaborate together on this. <laughs> so it was really nice to actually like as I'm working on the file on I mean, on the website basically, he can like go onto the website and see what I already added and like he can give me hints on like, oh, I like, can we see if we can add GIFs? I'm like, oh yeah, let's try that. And like, <laughs> it actually turned out to be like, great, because how do you show interaction without any animation, you know? So that was definitely something useful. Exactly. Well, it also helps that part of, part of your sway come to life, too. Yes, right. this thing, it feels alive, right? It feels like I'm actually kind of there with your with the exhibit there, um, living in it. Right. I think that that's what's one of the hardest parts about our work is that you can see sort of how it's created, but how it actually you actually experience it mm -hmm. um, is um, you know is, is something that we're always struggling with. So I really appreciated that. That was one of the, the the more magical moments for us is when when I first saw these layouts, for example, they were all static. And um, when when I saw them in the next iteration, Edita had added all of this animation, and it just I was like, okay, it's like it's being there. It's great. Yeah, definitely. So we'll switch back. That's really great to see. And you know, Philip, I remember you talking a little bit about how you know not only was this uh, were you using this to to talk about the, the final finished product and and you know how the how the installation went uh, in Chicago, but also kind of storyboarding uh, and yeah. thinking about kind of. Putting some putting some ideas together to show uh, the client kind of in process what you were thinking to quickly think, whip it together. I think one of the really interesting moments for me was when I was working on this with Edita. Like she mentioned earlier, a client came in, and it's sort of the same problem. Sometimes when we are pre-visualizing a a project with a client, we have a lot of media. They want to see it in a, sort of a finished form. But mm -hmm. it's very hard to like whip up a website or or put it into an iPad quickly enough and with enough I want to say elegance that it feels like they can own it because it's their content they they're very precious with it so Sway was this nice medium for us to um, be able to get their things into a form that yeah. very quickly but where it didn't require a lot of um, I want to say uh, production in order to find something that they would that I felt 
good enough showing to a client. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. And so I think that when we were working together on this and on the other pieces, um, just that speed of being able to see the work that we're doing very quickly, but at the same time share it almost immediately when we need to, that was that was really a, a nice uh, feature of Sway. Yeah. That's awesome. And actually, you know, Sean, you you were talking a little bit before we got started about how actually um, on the on the sort of filmmaking side, um, you were also uh, thinking about using Sway and using it for sort of that kind of storyboarding or pre-storyboarding concept yeah. as well. Uh, so uh, recently, I took on I kind of came on board to direct for film, and um, uh, they're people who I haven't worked with before. They have a great script. Uh, they're super talented, and uh, Sway has been a great way for me to kind of take their inspirations for the film and my inspirations and kind of create a collage, kind of a lookbook of all the different elements that I'd like to kind of propose out there, and then we can go through that together. We don't have to be in the same room and pick out the things that really sing to each of us. And mm -hmm. kind of that helps me as a director to hone in on the style or the feel of, of the film. Uh, so it's allowing us to do a lot of collaborative pre-production work uh, ahead of time and in a distance way, but not in a way that feels... Um, disconnected, you know. I, I think everybody feels like they can throw their creative inspirations in there, and then we're able to look at it and work from there. And that's been wonderful for, from a collaborative standpoint. That's awesome. Do you uh, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, f with your with your educator hat on as well yeah. <laughs> um, about uh, sort of you know how you use digital storytelling in the education space, and also how Sway has been fitting into that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a few things. One of the big things that we do is, is try to hope that uh, media making and visual literacy will become part of ELA standards in the country, that, that you can as much turn in a, a written word paper as you can turn in a piece of media because you need both of those tools in the world no matter what profession you're working in. And so what's been really exciting about Sway, uh, kind of in the same way that I just described it with how I'm using it professionally, is that I'm able to sort of say to students, um, that old term of show your work, you know? They can mm -hmm. kind of show their work and show their way of thinking and not feel like everybody has to take a, a rigid path to the end product. So, so a lot of my students who are teenagers are inspired by a certain song that they heard, and that reminds them about a special moment that maybe they first heard that song uh, dur during. And so that becomes the kind of beginning of something like a sway, and then they can start to patchwork together visuals, color palettes, uh, uh, the meaning, maybe the journal entry that kind of came that that came to life out of hearing that song, and suddenly a project gets gets to take form. And what's nice is, um, in some ways, I mean, as you can see with Daria's uh, project, in a way that could be even an end product, right? It's an extremely interactive, exploratory, uh, emotional experience to go through how somebody comes comes to sort of uh, uh, goes through their creative process. Um, and then in other ways, it's a great way of sort of being able to look at, and from an educator standpoint, we always want to be able to kind of assess is like the wrong word, but we want to see how folks got from point A to point B creatively, and this gives me an idea of how one of my students' kind of brains are working and lets me know how I can kind of connect to them later on or, or point at a certain part and get them to sort of explain to me, well, this is an important piece because, right? So it helps everybody evolve with their creative process and it it's a uh, it's a really nice kind of one you know one size fits all device to letting people work creatively and also grow creatively and allow their allow their mentors and their educators to see how they're growing and be there to support that and push them along that's great yeah, and one of the things that I think we've also been hearing you know and this is something that that uh, one of your comments made me think of is um you know, the ability to have everything kind of right there all laid out together versus needing to go off to different places. Like, as as your students are exploring and getting ideas and putting things down, like, they can actually string those ideas together and let you stay in one place to view them all mm -hmm. without necessarily, you know, having to go hyperlink away to every, you know, every other place for every individual piece of content or every sort of you know, every atom of their ideas, if you will, right? They can actually co-locate everything together. So they can explain, you know, and then you can watch in line uh, right with all the things that are that, that are going on. Yeah, well, we, I mean, a, a big thing we talk about in filmmaking is juxtaposition, right? When yeah. we post-production. And it's not juxtaposition if I have to click through a link. 
But if I'm able to put a sound file next to an image, play that music, and then put another image next to it, well, kind of A plus B plus C is going to create something different, right? So there are these kind of uh, old traditional standards of editing and, and message delivery and storytelling that sways creating a lot of flexibility with how you do that. Yeah, and yeah. Philip, that's that's one of the things that actually that I that I loved about uh, your sway as well, right? Is that it let you have all those pieces right there in line to be able to to be able to talk about that exhibit and bring it to life across those pieces of media, without having to send you to you know this one place to go watch the video, this other place to read the text, this other place to see the images, and sort of just a standalone photo album. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's um, like the experiential quality of the story is something that we're always really um, thinking about. And so whether, you know, you want to sort of be able to be immersed and sway in, 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 in its way, like, you know, it takes over the browser, it, it gives some animation, it sort of maintains context. And so it gives us a little bit more control over that sort of experience mm -hmm. um, in, in a way that I think is, like I said, is fast, it, it it, we were surprised by sort of how easily and quickly we were able to get something, you know, 90%. Um, as designers, I think we always struggle with the last 10%, no matter what it is, and we love to have more control. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I think that, that, was, that that's where it was really interesting to learn where the sweet spot was. Yeah. For mm -hmm. You know, when we, when we started The Future of Storytelling, one of the premises that it's built on is this idea that there's a convergence going on, that the traditional silos of media uh, are breaking down or crumbling, and that today uh, people want to be able to be fluent in all different kinds of storytelling, all different media. And I really see Sway as one of these first products that's built with that uh, understanding baked in. It really is, is a tool of this next generation of storytelling where people can work just as just as comfortably with video, with audio, with words, with pictures, uh, and and this is this is the kind of democratized, easy, and still beautiful tool that's enabling this kind of next generation of storyteller uh, make a very professional looking sway. I don't have another word for it really, uh, uh, and and do it in a way that really is, is a um, powerful storytelling and and easy to share. Exactly. Exactly. Well, we have. A, I see here. We actually have a comment that came in from Tim, who who uh, sounds very excited by the conversation, but is acknowledging that he hasn't actually played with it and was asking us to perhaps uh, do a hangout where we would walk through the creation of a sway mm -hmm. and swayentation, which I hadn't heard before either, like a presentation using <laughs> sway. Uh, so, David, maybe that's another idea for us for another for another day. Yeah, that would be a great thing to consider. I mean, one of the things we 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 showed we showed a couple of final outputs, but we didn't show the process of putting it together. And you've you've heard us all talking about how easy it is to put together, and and there is a lot of uh, assistance built into the box to make it very easy, so that anyone can really get these great looking, polished, professional designs uh, out of the box. But uh, but yeah, that's that's something we'll probably have to follow up on. I think we're running short on time today. Um, well, listen, I, I really appreciate everybody coming together. Um, I so appreciate the FOSS community um, and its great creativity and your willingness to be part of uh, our, our collaboration. And I'm so glad to see that it was really a value to everybody, you know, that this was a uh, kind of a win-win-win. And um, so thank you all for your, for your participation and your time today, for the beautiful work that you did using Sway. Uh, David, thank you so much for, for being our guest today and for your partnership. Uh, and we look forward to, to much more. So um, one last thing, I'm going to send a little plug tonight. We have the uh, opening, the VIP opening of our new Future of Storytelling exhibition, the theme of the moving image. It's called Sensory Stories. And it's going to open on Saturday to the public and be up for three months. Uh, wonderful museum, the Museum of the Moving Image. So I hope you all take some time and come join us for that uh, exhibit. Uh, we'll really see it at some point. Um, and on that note, thank you all for being here today, and we look forward to much, much more. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Charlie. It was great talking with you all.